Do you admire him more than you did before you started it? As you get closer to him, you realize, wait, he's not a genius, and that helicopter didn't fly. And, you know, he wasn't really good at math. He messes up right. some of the math things. And when he's working on squaring the circle, which he does as a kid, he does with at Milan, and on his deathbed, he's still trying to figure out how to square the circle. All these things, so he's not as smart as you go, whoa, uh, this is disappointing. And that, then you realize that not having received wisdom, he observes everything for himself. He says, I'm a disciple of experience. You tell me something, I'm going to have to look at it and discover myself. And so you go up and down as you see, well, fantasy is so much a part of what he does. And then you realize that's the cool thing. You got to blur fantasy with reality. Or that he doesn't finish things. Well, his conceptions are perfect and he doesn't finish things. So discovering that he's an actual human being, just like, well, not you and me, but just like uh, our kids uh, who have strengths and weaknesses, and that he's not, that means we can try to be more like him. When we go outside and see that bird there that's coming down, we can say, does the wings go up faster or down faster when they do it? We can try to observe like Leonardo. We can try to be curious, which is the, right. you know, playfully curious and inquisitive, which was his ultimate trait. Those are things we can do. We can't be Newton. We can't be mm -hmm. Einstein, but we can try to be more like Leonardo. No. I also like to do people who are a bit inspiring, like Leonardo da Vinci, the, most, the ultimate of that, because he is the world's in history's greatest genius, period. The most creative genius, period. But he's also somebody who, as you read about him, you say, oh, I could be more like that. I could actually observe things as closely as he tries to, like uh, how a dragonfly's wings go, or ask the questions he asks, like why is the sky blue, or why do fish go through water faster than birds through air, even though water is heavier. These, he li lists in his notebook every week, the simple questions that if we paused and observed harder, we could say, oh, we could be more like Leonardo. My favorite, and it's almost the theme of the book, because it's the very beginning of the book and the very coda of the book, is in one day he just writes, describe the tongue of the woodpecker. And you go, wow, why would you do that? How would you do that? I mean, you have to get a woodpecker and you know, open the thing's mouth. Um, why would you even want to? And it's just curiosity, pure curiosity, not connected, even though half of what he does is connected to his art. Like I, you know, he's trying to figure out how the lips work. Well, that's connected to his art. But there, most of the time, he's being curious for curiosity's sake. And that's why you all are in this room. You're not here because you can get a lot of totally useful knowledge out of an idea festival. You're here because you're curious about things. And if you read about Leonardo, I promise you, you can up that game 50%.